A lot of people are pointing out to me, by the way, that um, Dan Gilbert's son, Nick, has that neurofibromatosis or oh, whatever. Wow. That's what his son's got. Yeah. So that, when that is mentioned, uh, well, gives a little bit of a higher money. profile. What's that? He's got billions of dollars. He should be one fixing it. Hey, he might well, give he them money. Be. Uh, yeah, yeah, you don't know. <laughs> That'd be, that'd be a real dick move if you're like, oh, my kid's got it, but I'm not worried about it. <laughs> but I mean, all these stories that I'm getting from people, and I won't uh, belabor the point, but all these stories I'm getting from people who have worked in the service industry, specifically in the restaurant business uh, or food service industry, where, you know, you'll have an elderly customer who's there on the regular and there's, something's going to happen in the dining room yeah. or they don't make it to the men's room in time or whatever. And the manager goes, get out there and clean that up. It's why I worked my way up to manager, they will tell you, so that I didn't have to get pointed at and say, go clean that up. Oh, thank you. Mm. Alan, when is the next team being chosen for the Polar Blast? That would be Mon- Well, no, Tuesday. I'm sorry. We're out mm-hmm. Monday. Uh, there's an early Cavs game on Monday, so we'll do a sum of show. Uh, but that will end at 4.30. And then Cavs pregame, they'll play a 5 o'clock game. I think they're against the Knicks on Monday uh, at the Romo Fijo. And um, Tuesday, we'll double up. We'll get the first two people uh, for Bill's Polar Blast team. We go to Boston Mills Brandywine for the 10th annual Polar Blast on February the 7th. And there are discount tickets for you. While we've got them, those always go very quickly. Uh, so grab them if you want to. $10.07 at alancockshow.com. Use the keyword Polar Blast. The name of your team again, Bill? William Scott Squires. <laughs> You should really beings. write this down. Yeah, I probably should at some point, but I don't want to. Uh, William Scott Squires, human beings on snow tubes. Okay. Racing on snow tubes. Something like that. I'll write it down next week. Yeah, it's not official it until we it's start putting team. people on the team. Your team. Yeah. If somebody... Uh, you know what? I'm changing it. Snow babies. No. I'll take that's that That's mine. One. I already have that one. Yeah, but you don't have a team yet. And I'll have a team next week, so I can take it. We can switch the order of when they get put on the teams. You're not no, doing no, that. No. I'm but she has a team as much as you have a team now. Yeah. Right. So neither uh, of them exist yet. So Tuesday, when I actually have people on the team, I'll officially make my team snow babies. But what if someone? What if someone is already uh, ahead of you and making uh, team shirts for you? They're covered in letters now because of the length of the name of the team. Mm-hmm. Anyway, mm-hmm. week after that. Not my problem. Week of the twenty seventh. It's going to be uh, Mary Santora's snow babies. Mm-hmm. And Pound Cake's team, if you want to register to get on his team that he shares with Barry White, you would want to do that. won't be on the air. You register at alancockshow.com for that. And have we determined what the name of your team will be, Cody? No, not yet. Not yet. Okay. Well, that is still to come. He's not under the gun because we won't be doing that on the air. Uh, you'll register at alancockshow.com. Alan, I went to college with that Kent State gun girl and it just dawned on me that I saw her eat a booger in class. I never thought about it until listening to you guys. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so she's got some redeeming qualities. <laughs> right. Every now and then. Well, there you go. Between that and pooping her pants at the frat party, I hey. like this girl. She was always unloading <laughs> something. <laughs> <laughs> Twelve rounds in my pants. Good for her. Um... It's a little inside baseball, but it's been a rough week here at iHeartMedia. We've lost a lot of friends and peers and companions. I'm sure by now people have seen the coverage of it that this company underwent a huge uh, downsizing. What do they call it? Employee Employee dislocation. Dislocation. Employee dislocation, right? Put all those employees. And um, one of the people that we lost here is one of the best in the biz, Don Action Jackson, who worked down the hall from us. He's been here, he predates me by almost a decade. He's been here for 18 years. He did afternoons at uh, Magic 105.7. Hell of a guy. uh, Great at what he does. I hope someone else avails themselves of his talents. Um, And congratulations to Channel 5 for nailing the coverage, by the way. (laughs) He's easily the most high-profile person that got let go in this cluster of mm-hmm. radio stations and i've talked to friends of mine who work in other markets for this company and they didn't lose as many people as we did um uh, friends of mine in chicago who work for this company they lost three or four people we lost 10 or 11 i think um pittsburgh they only lost you know you count them on one hand i don't think there's any rhyme or reason to that it just is what it is but uh, channel five uh, was doing their coverage of this. I don't have audio for you, uh, but I did notice that uh, not only did they put up a photo, a headshot of Action Jackson to do the story, uh, they repeatedly referred to him as Action Johnson. 
<laughs> so I don't know what a guy has to do to be in a market, a high-profile person in local media for almost two decades, and then the final indignity as you're walking out the door is local media coverage of Action Johnson. They didn't ask him for comment or nothing. Oh, oh, they may have. I don't know. He, I mean, so any, they, any hey, time, Mr. Johnson. Well, anytime mm-hmm. you get let go and they go, you have a comment. What they, are you going to say? Like, they no, couldn't contact him for a comment because the guy's name wrong. So they're looking up <laughs> Don looking Action, Action Johnson. Johnson. They're like, I can't find any social media for this guy at all. Can I speak to Action Johnson, please? There's nobody here by that name. Really? God, he says he was at the radio station for a long time. He's one of the best. And he should have been afforded a bit more than that. So, you know, listen. And I know that TV is operating on bare bones these days, too. But, I mean, it just takes a Google search, man, uh, to figure it out. So, uh, whatever. What are you going to do, right? We live to fight. We live to fight another day. We lost Maria at this radio station. It's a bummer. And, Miss you, Maria. Uh, of course. But... Um, uh, Don Action Jackson, not Johnson. Action Johnson doesn't even rhyme. And Action Jackson, like it's a you know, it's a DJ name, but I mean it means something, yeah. right? You took it from something. Action Johnson's nothing <laughs> that I know of. I don't know. That real that stuck in my craw. I don't know why it did, but it did. <laughs> the, the message that you sent us all from him was very nice. He's a good guy. Oh yeah, I, I was chatting like with him a little bit, and he's a, he's a fan of this show, and he's very complimentary toward uh, uh, everyone here, and you know. Java That's Joel good. is not gone from Kiss. I think he's the only one who's not gone from Kiss. Java Joel is still the the grand poobah over there. So no, he's still there, and he's um, picking up the slack. So and he's a good dude too. Hey, I got a thousand dollars here for you. Um, if your name is Action Johnson, don't try to win this because we already know where you are. Chance for you to go fund yourself. Uh, every hour you get a crack at this, so good luck. Hey, it's Rover. Go fund yourself. We have your shot at $1,000 now. Text the nationwide keyword MOM to the number 200-200. You'll get a text confirming entry plus iHeartRadio info. Standard data and message rate supply in this nationwide contest. That's MOM to 200-200. Good luck and go fund yourself from 100.7 WMMS. Alan Mary's team's name should be Nectar of the Broads. <laughs> that make any sense? That's funny. Why isn't Bill's team called Click Click Tube? Oh! Click, click, it is now. It absolutely is now. Click Click Tube! <laughs> yeah, well, that's it. Uh, right? Click Click Tube! Click Click Tube. That's, that's, way, that's, that's way better great. than anything I could come up with. Thank you. For saving me. Now I, I want to. I wa- William Scott Squires. I was going to say. Thing. I want to make sure. Are you positive that's better than William Scott Squires' <laughs> team of humans riding plastic tubes down a hill, or whatever it was? It, there. I mean, it's like, it's a preference thing. I'm going to go with click click tube. I like it better. Click click tube. Click click tube. So on Tuesday, we will grab the first two people to put them on click click tube. <laughs> that's great. Click click. It's so dumb, and it makes me laugh every time. Oh, Why God. Why are you laughing, Mary? Because oh. I've had enough of you today already. <laughs> You've had enough of him? Yeah. Or were you talking to me? No, you're great. Well, I know you can never get enough of me. No, yeah. Alan. That's what the on, audience tells please, me, anyway. You know? uh, why have you already had enough of him? I don't know. Did he make you smell more of his farts no. earlier in the show? Do you okay. want skin me to? under my skin. No. All right. How? Just being By having your, fun? Literally being yourself. <laughs> 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 I'm not trying to be mean. <laughs> Sounds like you're being real mean. Everything you're doing today is Listen, I, uh, let me say this. pushing me the wrong way. Let me say this. I know that the two of you have a long-standing, pre-existing relationship. All I would ask, Bill, uh-huh. is that now that Mary is officially on the program, mm-hmm. perhaps... Don't be yourself so much. You can... No, no, no. <laughs> In here I'm is kidding. fine. Maybe you can limit your interaction with her pre-show <laughs> so she doesn't come in here all salty. I didn't talk I'm with her. I'm actually not. We didn't talk at I all today. I didn't talk with her at all today. <laughs> I'm being was, more right, funny I than anything. I was working. I'm being more funny She's than She's just being anything. mean because she thinks being mean is how you be funny. Whatever. <laughs> These are the things I'm talking about. I'm trying to play into it less, so I'm just going to sit with a sour look on my face and not respond. That's better, right? Well, it certainly uh, holds true to your mean comedy theory, Mary. Oh, sorry, I didn't realize <laughs> that I just learned about. <laughs> I didn't realize. It's like people who think that louder equals funnier. Mm-hmm. You know, it's along the same line. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> 
You know, that guy's not very funny, but he's so loud. He does like to yell. I can't yeah. help but feel uh, really included in the mm-hmm. whole process. Hey, Melissa. Hey. Hey. How are you guys? What's going on? Nothing much. I just wanted to tell you guys a funny story. I used to be a property manager for off-campus student housing for a university. <laughs> so, Wait, is that the funny part? Or, uh, no. Okay. That'd be mean. I have to watch videos. Uh, anybody who damages the property. Well, we're talking college students. Yep. We're talking pee pukes. The best video by far was there was a trail of poop running down from the third floor. I had to watch the video figure out who did that. <laughs> so I got to watch the video of a guy pooping down his shorts, stopping, pulling off his sock, wiping himself, throwing the sock down on the ground, and headed out the door. I like oh, how Melissa says, I got to do this. You know, she's like, I'll tell you what, I went home. How was your day, honey? And, uh, well, this is actually the story of how she met her husband. Oh, and that man today, we have three children. Uh huh. I didn't let it run Thank down God my I leg, house- she said. We've been- Thank God I had a housekeeper. I didn't have to do that. But <laughs> right. the amount of weird stuff I have seen from college students working in campus housing is crazy. So then, were you able, are you saying you were able to identify the student? I was able to, yes. He was not a resident, but he was a guest. And so, so was there go, was there any retribution for that, or were, were these, was yeah, he? you get fined. Fined, banned from campus, anything like that? No, no, just money fine. How much was the fine? I think it was like 150 bucks. That's worth a, a leg out and a poop running down yeah. three floors. <sighs> I mean, for now, let me ask you this. Here's the thing: I would want the video. I was gonna say, did he get a copy <laughs> of the video? He's like, I'll pay you no, three hundred dollars, but I want a copy of the video. That's probably the, uh, the <laughs> that's probably the property of uh, campus police. Yeah, well, off no, campus housing though. Not. Oh, I see. Yeah, but the campus police don't they technically police off campus housing too no, if they're know. students? No, that's for the, no, the no. city. Oh, it is. It's mm-hmm. the city. Yeah. yeah. It's not campus cops? No. Yeah, okay. Nope. All right, thank you, Melissa. Yeah. You live to yeah. fight another day. She... <laughs> well, imagine that's your job, right? And you're like, okay, I have to go through these tapes. And usually it's something completely innocuous. She goes in and she settles in front of the CCTV or whatever. She's like, oh, another day of uh, uh, people uh, sneaking somebody into their dorm, another day of whatever. And then, even though in retrospect it's probably really disgusting, but she goes, oh, my God, I get to look and see. Yeah, I'm a poop detective. Poop detective. <laughs> right. Shrimp Lock Holmes. <laughs> That's right. She goes, I gotcha, you son of a bitch. No shrimp, Sherlock. <laughs> On the yeah. contrary. Hey, actually, lots of it. Mm-hmm. It's the whole case. Hmm. Well, anyway, $150. That doesn't seem like a lot of money for something like that. Depends on Does the it? Year. $150? I mean, I they're like, know. hey, we saw you take a dump. To a college student, though. Like, my, when I was in college. But he wasn't a student. He was a guest. But well, he's probably young. also a student, though. And you someone think? else is going to have yeah. to, like, pay for it. To, I mean, my rent was two forty a month in college. Jeez. I paid two forty a month. Yeah, but you live with, like, nine people. Doesn't matter. You it still have a, matter. You still have an apartment in, I mean, you have a roommate in the apartments at that That's pretty cheap, right? 240 What was it? Two forty. Two forty a month. Wow, that's so cheap. I would love that. My son is going to be in an apartment with some friends next year. He's a freshman this year, but sophomore year, he's moving off campus. And, um, <clears throat> well, you never get a break. Just They will jack the price up of these hovels because they know students are there, mm-hmm. you know? He's going to be living with a bunch of other friends, and they're each going to be paying, like, almost 600 bucks a Jeez. month. Jeez. So, like, 240 Our oh friend. My God. Well, um, I had a house. Yeah, yeah, they're going to be in a house. My uh, mm. my roommate's dad bought a house, and then the four of us lived That's in it. That's the trick, boy. So our rent, I think, was three fifty or four hundred a month. But Buy we some... had a full house, so it was like it was a four bedroom house with a basement that had laundry and all that stuff, a yard, everything. And then so we just paid the rent, the money directly. I think it was four hundred a month. Um, we gave it directly to her. Well, dad. yeah, if you know the property owner. Yeah, her but dad. if you're just renting from some, uh, you know. A campus slumlord. Yeah, they're this, not going to fix the place up, and yeah. you're still going to pay him tons of money. It I, was like such. A, it was such a great situation, and obviously he had the means to do it, which was amazing that he was so nice to us to do that. But uh, to have a house with people you trust, and like you said, you know, the, if anything goes wrong, we just call him and be like, "Hey, uh, Emily's dad, uh, is this? Man. Hey, is this Emily's okay? dad. <laughs> I know we rent from you, but I never learned your first name. I had a small little efficiency apartment in Tremont, in like the 
mid 2000s when I first started doing comedy and it was 240 a month and I wish I still had that just to have it. Yeah, it just so somewhere cheap. to go. Just to yeah, like it was just so cheap and it was so it, like it wasn't nice, but it was fine. Yeah. It's fine for what I was doing. I had five other roommates in. I mean, you've been to my ho- my college house bill. Yeah. It was spacious. Like I we no, were on big top house. of each yeah. other. Yeah. So, I mean, and the parties there and I mean, but my it was gross. Oh, yeah, it's a college house. Yeah. And it was boys. If it had it been a girl house, everything would have been, like, pristine. But, yeah, whatever. Holes no, in not no, necessarily. Oh, God, they're gross, too. We were pretty clean. W- were well, you? Yeah, we I were think, all clean people, though. I think they, they're they gross to each other. All but it takes is one, had, though. Whether boys or girls, it just takes one gross person. We did have one roommate who... And it doesn't... Then it all comes down. She kept her room a pigsty. She yeah. would have, like, pizza boxes and beer. Like, just just stuff everywhere. Laundry they, and stuff like that. They don't do the dishes or something. Yeah. yeah. But it I was like always... When, we knew who it was. We're like, dude, can you just do your dishes? Like, this, everyone else is pulling their weight, mm-hmm. you know? When boys come over, all that stuff goes away. I no. almost I almost roomed with girls. Like, there was another house with... a. Uh, granted, their their rent was more expensive, but I thought about it. I was like, oh, yeah, think about all the, like, scorned ex-boyfriends that will be over there. And they're like, hey, you know, I know your roommate's with Shelby. Can you <laughs> can you talk to her for me? I'm like, well, well, we'll see. But Scorn- you were the gatekeeper. Lock. Yeah, I, yeah. I, 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 I thought scorned about that. Scorned and, and my other, the guy I ended up rooming with, he was like, he talked me out of it. He was like, you are going to hate your life. He was like, I know it seems alluring because there's going to be guys in and out of that house and, you know, all the parties that they have. He was like, but w- think about when they're fighting or when they come home. Yeah, drunk. they're going to be and drunk have, and screaming and at each to, other. And you have to take that care of them. That never happened in my house. Oh God! When I after I got divorced, my girlfriend was still in college, and uh, <laughs> she li- she went to Pitt and she lived with a bunch of her friends in this this it's called the student ghetto. These mm-hmm. j- run down houses that everybody's getting charged out the ass for. But it was a full house, and it was her and I think like four other girls, and the house was constantly in disarray. And she kind of kept to herself. Yeah. She had like the her bedroom was basically the front room of this house. Mm-hmm. It used to be clearly used to be like a living room. These yeah. old houses, but it was always like screaming going on and drunk boyfriends yelling. And I was like, "This is." See, oh. I think it was a group of girls I had though. They were all pretty like one is a pharmacist now, one is a uh, therapist. Like everyone kind of had their focus. I was probably the mess up of the group. I wasn't the dirty one, but I was the one who was drunk and working at a bar. They were future like professionals. That. Yes. Mm, I see. Very mature. White collar college students. Mm. Hey. Yeah, all right. Whatever. You shouldn't have to watch anybody do, on the closed circuit take a dump. No. Mm. Up three flights. <laughs> I fell asleep trying to bake a pizza twice. <laughs> I passed out drunk in the kitchen. And that was it. last year. Yeah, well, the, in college is when it first So you happened. learned in college. I learned how to do it in so college. So you did get some life skills yeah. in college. Uh-huh. Yeah. When the pizza's black and on fire, you throw it outside. Uh-huh. And then open up all the windows. Oh, cool. For anybody else, life hack. Understood. If you are a drunk who passes out in the kitchen. <laughs> oh, I think they've probably figured it out. Yeah, <laughs> right. if they're a drunk. Drunks know all the life hacks. Oh, so many. The best. If your phone charges twice as fast if you put it on airplane mode. <laughs> yeah, forget Google. <laughs> Ask oh, a drunk yeah. near Ask you. Ask a drunk any like kind of little thing like that. We've got them, for sure. Hey, do you have a shortcut to... Hell yeah, I have a shortcut. Mm-hmm. Yep. When I wake up, I'll tell you all about it. Right. Okay, Beer Fest. There's a transition. Beer Fest. Cleveland Winter Beer Fest is the 24th and 25th. Uh, Right downtown, I'll have a couple of passes for you for that if you want to check out all the craft beers and local regional brews and all that. 35192. Want to send me a text? AlanCoxShow.com for everything else. The Alan Cox Show on 100.7 WMMS. And everywhere you go on our free iHeartRadio app. When you go out trying to have just one beer, it's like trying to fall down just one step of a staircase. You can't do it.